What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red River Aviation. Hope you all have a fantastic day today and today a very exciting model review for y'all. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Gemini Jets 1-400 scale Polar Airlines or Polar Air Cargo I should say Boeing 747-400 in the interactive series for Gemini Jets. I really hope each and every one of you are excited for today's video. I'll go ahead and take this off to the side. We'll take a look at it here in a bit. Let's go ahead and get started with the box. So going forward I hope every six months or so to do a video on some of the unique aircrafts that you can get in one the 400 skill that includes Gemini Jets' interactive series, Gemini Jets' flaps down aircraft, and other such aircraft that have unique features or just characteristics in general that are worth assessing regularly. So that's exactly what we have here with the Polar Air Cargo 747 interactive series. About a year ago or so, I reviewed my first interactive that was the Cargo Lux. So really glad to have yet another one with this Polar Air Cargo. So I actually get end up getting this as a coincidence. During Cyber Monday in 2023, DG Pilot was doing a sale that if you bought one model, you would get 10% off and a free model to go with it. And that's exactly what I took advantage of here with this uh, aircraft. And this was the free aircraft. So I thought it was really cool. It was a cargo aircraft that you got for free. So I knew it would be cargo. I didn't know that was gonna be a 747 Interactive though. So that was really cool. And again, really glad to have this aircraft in the fleet as it does come to Dallas sometimes. So certainly we'll be able to use it. And of course, great planes. So how exciting is that? So that's absolutely awesome to say at least. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box. So the standard Gemini Jets box, the main characteristics difference is that you have the interactive series uh, sticker here throughout the box. So you're gonna see on the front and then the sides. I think it looks really cool. So definitely a nice uh, the notion. And of course the uh, nose and the cargo pieces open on the CGI, which is really cool. And here at the back of the box, it was one of the first 747-400s in the interactive lineup. This was a 2021 box, probably uh, late 2021 release, early 2022, somewhere there. Here is the pamphlet. And then here, what you got is the bag for the uh, the polar piece, which I'll show you, the rod piece, and then you also got all the cutouts where the interactive parts of the aircraft go. So definitely looks really nice right there. Okay, so what we'll do for different is I will review the aircraft once we have it in a configuration because I'd rather show you all how the actual configuration works here because it's a pretty basic livery and don't get me wrong, it has, apologies about the mount, it's, sometimes, it's been falling lately. Uh, the aircraft certainly worth reviewing. I just want to get in the configuration so you can see it, but I want to show you all how this works if you haven't seen how interactive aircraft works before. So let me get this mount evened out because it's certainly uh, not seeing its best day right now, which I don't know why, but nevertheless, let me try to get that fixed here so we don't have to keep seeing it fall over. Apologies, everybody. Oh, I don't have to get an actual tripod. I've really liked this mount. It's worked really well for the phone. Okay, I think this will hopefully hold. So let me see if I can... It's just getting it exactly right. I guess it's also an optical illusion. I want to get the frame right, but it's a wide body, so it's kind of hard to do that. So here it is, the interactive Polar 747-400. Let me make sure that it's getting focused. So here's what comes with the aircraft itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at these parts. So you have these various pieces that come with the aircraft. You have these, oh, gosh darn it. Apologies, guys. I don't know why it's not willing to cooperate. I'm going to try to stretch it out a little bit. Maybe that will fix it up. I honestly don't know. This is probably more annoying than what it's worth. So I apologize, everybody. I'm trying to get it fixed. It just doesn't want to sit. It really doesn't. And the, I haven't got a new phone or any of it. So I don't know why it's just randomly deciding today is not the day. Alrighty, guys, I guess I'll have to go handheld because I don't know why, but this just completely broke. It's not working, so I'll have to figure that out. So expect a new mount to come in the near future, but nevertheless, let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. So you have the various pieces here, and then of course you have this lever piece. So the purpose of the lever piece, or whatever you'd like to call this, is to take this out and adjust the pieces. So let's go ahead and put it into a configuration. So I'll start with the uh, pieces in. So you can see right here, the nose goes right here. And then, I'm trying to get it all the way in there. So there that goes. And then you have these various cargo doors themselves. So here's the big one that goes in the back. So let's go ahead and put that in there. I gotta let the dog out real quick. Let's let the dog out. Mom just came up here and interrupted while I was fixing the mount. So, dude, those gotta go. Okay. Apologies about that. Sometimes the dog doesn't make it out with the person that needs to make it out with. Okay, now we can really get focused here. So it's been kind of a dumpster fire. I apologize, guys. Anyways, so let's go ahead and put this piece in here. And again, I wish I didn't have to hold my phone, but I don't have the, I don't want to get a tripod out so I don't lose the light here. This one actually completely got stuck, so I just left it in there, which is fine. That 
one of them being closed at all times is unrealistic because that's kind of realistic so that works well and then this front piece of course goes in right here so let's see if we can get that going there we go okay so here's all the pieces so you can tell it's a little bit loose but ultimately it's not too bad so the purpose of the rod you can see a hole here so you can obviously try to get it out with a fingernail or an equivalent ma mat or not matrix that's the wrong word equivalent system but it doesn't always work so what the purpose of this is is that you put it in the hole if i can get it and then it'll gravitate enough gravity to take it out which is really cool so that's what the purpose of the rod is so i'll go ahead and take the pieces out the nose is a little bit easier because you can kind of just wiggle it off I don't even think it has a hole on it. Yeah, I think you're just supposed to wiggle it. There we go. So that works just like that. And then the front one again, very similar concept. Get in the hole right there. Yeah, almost had it be a little easier with two hands. This is literally like the crappiest review for two hands. Uh, darn it, this is literally the last time I would want this to happen. I wanna try this. Uh, it's been a dumpster fire today, guys. There's really not any good way to do this. This has been rough today. <laughs> oh, this is more bloopers reels. Than I just don't know a good way to do this. I really don't because I can't get my phone to hold up now. Maybe I can put my camera on top of the boxes. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. The DIY tripod has arrived. It's not perfect, but it will have to work for what we're doing right now because I gotta have two hands to do this the proper way. Okay. Even two hands is barely getting done. Apologies, guys. Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of tough to get in there, but it'll come out eventually. So that's the point of that. So let me go ahead and, and again, this back piece, I'll try to show you if I can, but it really doesn't want to come out. So as you can see, I get it going. And it's like stuck bad. It literally doesn't want to come out. So I don't know what to do about that. I could try to force it off at some point and I might, but nevertheless, I'll just leave it in for the sake of what we're doing right here. And for the sake of really using the interactive parts of this, I'll go ahead and put the interactive parts on it. So here's the nose. Try not to break the pieces off. Excuse me, they're very delicate. It's honestly kind of tough. I haven't done this in a while, so let's try this. You can see two holes on here. One's to hold the nose up and the other is for the end piece, the interactive end, if that makes sense. So there's that. And then we need to get the big sliding door and put that in. So that's what we'll do here. Darn it. Uh, there's, there's also, you can see in there, there's, this, uh, I don't know what the best name for it is, but the piece is to hold it up, so. That's nice. And then one of these goes here in the front. It's really tough to see which one it is. They have A and B on them. I'm sure there might be a place in the box where it says exactly, but we'll just say for the sake of what we're doing that that is correct. It looks pretty close, so I think it probably is. But anyway, after all of that, we finally do have, and let me scoot this up so we can get some more light on it. That's the reason that we were trying not to get tripod anyway. The interactive version of the Polar Air Cargo 747. So after all of that, we are gonna take a look at the aircraft. So apologies, this has been a dumpster fire review today. Thanks for bearing with me. Not as professional today because my mount broke. So what can you do? So let's go ahead, try to get this leveled out, focus the camera and go ahead and take a look at the aircraft. So here's the nose. And once again, you have the interactive series part that kind of just doesn't do much, but you know, it's okay. Not the best insert there, but they've really worked on that since this models came out. So that's okay. So there goes that, but you got the cockpit windows and the various details throughout here with the various panels and pedo tubes and all that. Also this bottom piece does have the polar logo on it. So that's really cool. Nose landing gear, nose landing gear door. Here's the escape hatch for the cockpit L1 door. You got three windows there in the polar billboard titles, which you have right over the logo. And then you got the blue line across Older JC Wings mold, so you can see kind of the two piece, which it isn't the prettiest, but she gets the job done. Leading edge lights, you got the engines over here and the landing gear, which do pivot and roll. Rolling isn't perfect, but they get the job done for sure. We got a little bit of wing flex, which isn't horrible, but I think again, it's got better since this particular models came out. 
Then you got the winglet, which looks really good there as well. So you can see the Polar Air Cargo logo, which is awesome. Flap slats and speed brakes also look really good. The blue line continues throughout. You got this antenna, which is loose, so I gotta be careful on that one. Then you got the two back here, where the door opens right here, Boeing 747 400, and you got the registration November 450 Papa Alpha, which is really cool. You got the L2 door, and then you got the Polar logo right there on the tail. Nice and big, blue, easy to see, horizontal stabilized, APU, all the rest of that fun detail. Right side of the aircraft is also very good, where you have another cargo door open right there. You got the lines and the various colors. Again, the back door doesn't uh, open right now, which I don't know why, but it's kind of interesting. Some good detail throughout here and also a piece right here. Uh, I guess it must just be like actual indentation on the fuselage, not completely sure. But anyways, looks pretty good back there and all the fun details. I'll try to get you the best top down I can. It's not gonna be pretty, but there it is. Looks pretty good. And the bottom of the aircraft also looks really good. You got the air inlets, which is a really impressive detail of this mold is the air inlets there. So that's really awesome to see. Otherwise pretty standard, but still looks really good there. So apologies, this was possibly my worst review in a long time. It just didn't wanna to cooperate today. So I appreciate everybody bearing with it. Thank you all so much for your continued support of these reviews and I'll be hopeful to have a better mount and hopefully a system next week when we return for hopefully a little bit more progress. So thank you all so much for your patience. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Thank you to everybody, stay safe, trust the process. Do you love and love you do? My name is Red Dead Aviation. I wanna thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all soon as Red Dead Aviation is signing off.